Well, welcome back uh, to my shop, my ham shack. After a little bit of a hiatus that I've been away, as you can see, I've made a bit of progress on the K2. The um, basic beginning steps are done up until the very first power up. That's where I'm at. Most of the board you can see, this is the RF board is not populated yet so this would not even function as a radio yet mainly what we're powering up and checking is the control board as far as I understand it and the circuitry with the uh, EEPROM which is what controls the radio that interacts with the front of the transceiver so we have a 12 uh, volt power supply hooked up it's actually 13.8 I double check the polarity on it. I'm going to turn the power supply on. The radio's not on yet. This is the power switch. And I'm going to read through these directions as I power this up and hope for the best here. I'm going to read the directions as I do this. If you see your cell smoke when you turn on your K2 for the first time, turn it off. Disconnect the power supply immediately. Normally you will hear relays being reset by the I.O. controller. The non next, the non-volatile configuration memory, the EEPROM, will be initialized. Okay. Turn on the K2 with S1. After 10 seconds, you should see the default K2 display frequency display for 40 meters, 7100.00C. The C indicates CW mode. The enunciator for VFOA will also be turned on. If you see any other info and it does not come on, refer to the troubleshooting. So here we go. One, two, three. Clicking. Telecraft. And there's the display. And the frequency is changing. The arrow, hmm, do I have something to point with? I hate to use my fat finger. There's little arrows underneath the frequency display. So they look like little dark lines on the, on the radio, on the uh, camera. The one is under preamp, the other one is under A. A is the uh, VFO, there's A and B. So that is correct. All right, we are working. Functional. Turn it off now and wait, then turn it back on. The display should now read Elecraft for two seconds, followed by the frequency display. Yeah, we already did that. Mm, I hit the wrong button. Let's turn it off. Clicking relays, Elecraft, and frequency display. The R and the T in Elecraft appear in lowercase due to the limitations of the seven segment LCD. Tap the display switch once to select the voltage current display. The display will now show something similar to this, and it, I'm not going to put it up to the camera because it won't focus. E12.0IO.018. This will indicate the power supply voltage, which is E. It is about 12 volts. Mine will be around 13 because that's what the power supply is. And the supply current is about 80 to 100 milliamps. So display. So we have 13.4 volts, the E, and uh, I0.808 is the uh, milliamps, which it would be 80, I guess, right? Yeah. Tap display again to return to frequency. Turn the VFO in both directions to verify the frequency changes. And it does because I already played with it a little. Tap the rate switch to the right of the knob to change the tuning rate and repeat the test at each rate. That rate button is here. It changed the frequency, yep. And now it's a higher one. Turn it again, and again we're back. So let's go back up. All right, one more. Yeah, 
take it back down to zero. All is working. Optical encoder. Tap display to return to frequency display. We did that, didn't we? Yeah, we did that. Tap the band switch. Band. After a short delay, the K2 will switch to the next band. At the same time, you'll hear a relay. Clicking of a relay. Tap the band switch seven more times to verify that you hear relays being switched with each band. Note, the 1.8 MHz, 160 meters, and 5 MHz, 60 meter bands will not appear in the list unless the associated options are installed. They are not installed. This can be done only after assembly and alignment have been completed, meaning those options can't be installed, I believe. So we're going to hit band. I heard a click. 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 I hope those clicks are... I'm going to hold this up to the mic. There's a click. And we're back to 40 meters. So there was a click every time, so you want to make sure the relays are actually changing the band uh, plus changing the frequency at the same time. All right, that's done. Tap the pre-attenuation switch three times. You should hear relay switch each time. Pre, that would be preamp, I believe. Yeah, preamp ATT it would be preamp and attenuator. Three times. I heard a click. Heard a click. Heard a click. Three times. Three clicks. Next, RF probe assembly. The switch spacing tool used for the front panel can now be used as a PC board for the RF probe. Yeah, I'm, I haven't built that yet. Mm -mm. Volt probe, voltmeter probe assembly. If you don't have a digital multimeter, you can use the simple DC probe shown below in conjunction with the built-in voltmeter. All right, the next thing is to build these little probes. The cool thing about the K2 is there's a bunch of test instruments built into the circuitry of this thing. You actually use it as a voltage uh, checker, a, a D DMM. You actually use it as a um, RF probe too. So you do a lot of tests with the radio itself instead of test equipment. I'm going to actually do that because I want to do it to disp to show how it's done and it, well not how it's done but to show that this thing does this stuff instead of using my own test stuff equipment. I think it would be cool to do that so I'm going to end this now and just say 73. The uh, I'm happy this thing is functional at this point. And we'll be back. I don't know when. Uh, it's July 3rd. Tomorrow's the 4th. I won't be working on this tomorrow. But uh, that's where we're at. Thanks for watching.